Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Yellow Images and for those that don't know me, my name is Richard Carpenter and I'm a web designer and illustrator. Yellow Images is a unique online marketplace with over 48,000 exclusive premium crafted mockups which can be used for branding, advertising and graphic design. Perfect if you're a web designer or graphic designer like myself. They also have a creative store which has a huge collection of ready to use graphic assets from independent creatives around the world. If fonts are your thing, Yellow Images has a great unique collection of fonts which can really bring your titles and headers to life. At the time of this video recording, you can buy anything with 90% discount. Just click the link in the description to get started. With that said and done, let's crack on with today's tutorial. Start off in Illustrator with a new document. The document size I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels but you can use a document of any size. I've pre-selected four colour swatches for my camouflage effect, but feel free to switch the colours around if you want to. Start off with the rectangle tool and just click anywhere within the artboard and then we just want to create a rectangle size of 1080 by 1080 or anything which is relatively square. Once created, horizontally and vertically centre that within the artboard and just fill that with the lightest colour swatch. Next, make sure the square is selected and then go to Effect, Artistic and then select Sponge. On the right hand side, move each one of these sliders for brush size, definition and smoothness all the way to the end and then press OK. Once the effect has been applied to the square, we still can't select all these different shapes individually. So the first thing we want to do is we want to expand the appearance by going to Object Expand Appearance. And what this will do is it will turn the sponge textured square into an image. So next what we're going to do is we're going to convert that image into a vector format by using the image trace tool. If you haven't got the image trace tool at the top you can go to window and then select image trace. When you open the image trace tool it might not look exactly the same as mine or you might not have all these options at the bottom. If that's the case you just want to click the little arrow next to the advanced section and what that'll do is it'll just open up and give you the ability to edit and manage all these settings. For now I'm going to leave the preview option unticked and then I'm just going to apply the following settings. So the preset you want to use is three colours. The number of colours you want to use you want to change to two. The paths we want at around 30% and then the corners and noise we can just move those all the way to the beginning. So 0% and one pixel. And then we also want to put a check in the ignore white option. And then if we just press preview to preview what that will look like. And then once you're happy with everything just select the expand option to convert all these different shapes into illustrator paths. And then you can close the image trace tool as this is no longer needed. Next select the rectangle tool again and select anywhere within the artboard. Using the same settings so 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels or anything which is square press OK and then we want to horizontally and vertically centre that within the artboard and then right click and go to arrange centre back and while it's still selected we just want to press I on the keyboard for the colour picker tool and then we just want to colour pick a green colour. Next select the light colour and that will select all the shapes which we traced earlier and then go to object compound path and then make while it's still selected go to edit copy and then edit paste in front again while it's still selected press i on the keyboard for the color picker tool and then you just want to color pick the dark brown color and then rotate it 45 degrees once you've rotated the duplicate reselect it and go to edit copy and then go to edit paste in front while it's still selected Press R on the keyboard for the colour pick tool and then just colour pick the darkest colour. White still selected, rotate it 45 degrees again. And then what you should end up with is something which resembles a camouflage style pattern. All we need to do now is crop into a specific area of the pattern so then we can start using it in one of our mockups. First select the rectangle tool. Click anywhere within the artboard and recreate the square, so 1080 by 1080 pixels. And then horizontally and vertically centre that within the artboard. Hold down the Alt key and Shift key on the keyboard. And using the top left or top right, one of the corner anchor points, resize the square down until all of the pattern sits within inside the square. Deselect the square and then drag a marquee around everything. 
then go to object clipping mask make and that's it for the camouflage pattern this is more your traditional style camouflage pattern but why not switch the colors around and create something a little bit different a little bit unique to yourself and just have a general play about next we're going to use the camouflage pattern and i'm going to show you how to apply this to a t-shirt mock-up to get started with the mock-up head over to yellowimages.com and browse their PSD mockups. Once you've found a suitable one, download it and open it up in Photoshop. If you want to use the mockup that I'm using, check the link in the description below. Once you've opened the TIFF file from Yellow Images in Photoshop, you'll notice that the PSD file is really, really well structured. Everything's in its own little group and color coded. So the first group t-shirt this is the highlights and shadows but the two groups you want to focus on is design and parts for now i'm just going to hide the design part and then open up the parts group for the colors next what we want to do is we want to change each one of these colors to represent the colors of our camouflage texture so I'm just going to head back into illustrator and i'm going to color pick the lightest color that we used and then I'm just going to copy the hex value to the clipboard, head back over to Photoshop and I'm going to use this light color for the stitching. So double clicking on the color adjustment layer and then just pasting in a hex value. Next I'm going to head back over to Illustrator and select the green color. Again just copying the hex value color code back into Photoshop and I'm going to use this color for the base color of the t-shirt making sure that the collar is also done and the inner side of the t-shirt for the sleeve of the t-shirt I'm just going to leave these pink for now because this is where I'm going to add a camouflage texture so collapse the parts group and then open and unhide the design group hide the layers for parts of the t-shirt which are not needed so things like the collar the inner side and the front and we're just going to concentrate on the two sleeves so each one of these is a smart object so the first one I do is double click the bottom sleeve and this this will open up a new tab and then what we want to do is head over to Illustrator select our camouflage pattern go to edit copy back into Photoshop and then go to edit paste once you've pasted the vector object into Photoshop you should get a dialog box asking you what to paste it as what we want to do is just want to select that as a smart object and then press ok and then zoom out and scale up the vector image so it fills the whole area press save to save that smart object then head back to the t-shirt and then double click the second sleeve Go to the original tab, select the layer and just drag that over to the second sleeve tab. And what that'll do is it'll keep it the exact same size as the opposite sleeve. Press Ctrl A on the keyboard for select all and then we just want to horizontally and vertically center the vector smart object. Ctrl S on the keyboard to save and then we can close the two sleeve smart objects. And what that'll do is it'll update the main mockup with a camouflage pattern. For the front of the t-shirt what we want to do is unhide the front design layer again double click the smart object and then it gives us a nice little grid to work with to fill this area with our design using the grid as a reference we just want to add in a design that we want to use this could be your logo or a customer's logo once you've added all the artwork hide the grid layer press save close the smart object and that will be updated then within the main PSD mockup. That's it for this week's tutorial, hopefully you've learned something new. If you like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified of any future videos be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.